ABC analyst Casey Briggs. Yeah, so Casey, just talk us through those numbers. Uh, yes, yeah, 17 new cases in um, Victoria today, and that's on top of those 22 from yesterday. Mm, that's right. That's uh, the number that I'm watching most closely uh, at the moment, 17 in Victoria. So 11 of those are linked to this one Melbourne abattoir. Uh, there were 19 linked to that abattoir yesterday, six the day before that, eight the day, the day before that. So we've got 45 uh, cases now in total in that single cluster. That is the biggest cluster in the country at the moment. That is the one that we're watching most closely to see uh, if it can be brought under control quickly. And we probably need to see a couple more days worth of figures uh, to know what the trajectory is looking like there. Around the rest of the country, three cases in New South Wales. We do know that there's one more uh, staff member of uh, Newmarch House that is uh, has been tested positive but wasn't counted in this reporting period for technical reasons. They'll be included tomorrow. Uh, and Queensland, five new cases but effectively just two because three of those are interstate cases uh, that will be removed from the other states' totals uh, because they're residents of uh, Queensland. So a little bit of complication there but the upshot of that is we're most closely watching Victoria. 11 new cases linked to that one abattoir. That's where all of our eyes are at the moment. But Casey, authorities down in, Vict well, in Victoria seem optimistic that they're on top of that cluster, that there won't be much community spread from there uh, because they say they got on top of that pretty quickly. That's the hope and that's what we're waiting to see if the numbers uh, bear out. I guess one other thing you could say about that cluster is uh, it's probably a, a profile of demographic quite different to many of the other clusters we've seen uh, in two uh, aged care homes. In, New in Sydney, we've seen very high fatality rates in those clusters because of the profile of the patients. Similarly in northwest Tasmania, because it got into hospitals, uh, we've seen vulnerable people affected and so we've seen quite high fatality rates. You have to think uh, this abattoir probably has younger people, fitter people, uh, people less likely to pass away. So that's at least mm. one good sign about, about this, uh, this cluster. Yeah, I think they've got uh, 350 staff at that abattoir, so we can possibly expect that number to grow further in the coming days. Okay, uh, let's take a global perspective now. Uh, just passed over a quarter of a million deaths worldwide. That's right. I mean, in some ways, it's a slightly arbitrary number because this is continuing to climb, but it is uh, significant. 250,000 deaths officially recorded now. However, I will say again, and I, I'd say this a lot, but these four countries, the United States, Italy, United Kingdom and Spain, very strong evidence now coming out that these are all significant undercounts by thousands and thousands and thousands. So the real number at this point is much higher than 250,000. Uh, we just got, don't know what it is uh, truly yet and it's going to take some time for those studies to be done, but uh, a significant milestone today nonetheless. And take us through what's been happening with other medical conditions through this pandemic. Yeah, so we know flu symptoms are down significantly on where they uh, usually would be at this time of year. Uh, what we're and also this is in seeing, Australia. In Australia, yes, specifically in Australia, but um, patterns like this are playing out around the world. But in Australia, we know uh, flu notifications, flu-like symptoms are down. We're also seeing this pattern for lots of other diseases. Let's take you through a couple. Uh, viruses and uh, bacteria that cause gastro and gastro-like conditions. We've seen a big drop in the last couple of uh, months. Now, that's actually not really a given. You might uh, think people are doing takeaway a bit more than they might uh, normally, uh, that increases the risk of things like food poisoning, gastro-like symptoms, but possibly the extra hand washing we're all doing is helping out uh, there. We've also seen a big drop in the number of people uh, with chicken pox and uh, a big drop in the number of people with chlamydia. Let's just say uh, there's probably less, uh, less opportunity for that uh, condition to be spreading through the community. So some positive uh, side effects. Uh, of what is overwhelmingly a, a bad position to be in, uh, diseases, uh, at least infectious diseases across the board, uh, are going down. Mm. Uh, could, could it be the case that people um, are less inclined to, have been less inclined to seek medical help and advice during this period and that that could have contributed to that or not? Probably, it probably is a bit of both. We've seen GPs uh, talking about, uh, you know, they're concerned that people are letting um, preventative health care go by the wayside because they're fearful of leaving the house or going to doctors or going to hospital. So probably in some shape or form that would be a contributor, but I think it's also undeniable that in the case of chlamydia, chickenpox, gastro, uh, there are less vectors for transmission at the moment. It's yep. probably a bit of both. Yep. Okay, Casey Briggs there.